Chapter 1. The Bitcoin concept came into existence on January 9th, 2009, when Satoshi Nakamoto generated the first batch of coins. Digital gold is an unusual story of group creativity that follows the growth of Bitcoin technology through the eyes of the movement's lively core characters, including an Argentinian millionaire, a Chinese entrepreneur, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss, and Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin's enigmatic founder. The evolution of Bitcoin has led to untold riches for some and prison sentences for others. By 2014, 29-year-old Eric Voorhees had gone from being unemployed to becoming a millionaire, thanks to the Bitcoin gold rush. Voorhees had bought a gambling site back in 2012 for about $225, rebranded it as Satoshi Dice, and sold it a year later for some $11 million. The impulse that propelled Voorhees and many others into this gold rush had both everything and nothing to do with getting rich. They predicted an astronomical growth in the value of Bitcoin. Most importantly, they saw that the multi-layered Bitcoin computer code would remake many of the prevailing power structures of the world, including Wall Street banks and national governments. Bitcoin would do to money what the internet had done to the postal service and the media industry. Bitcoin's rise would make him rich in more ways than one. It would also result in a more just and peaceful society, in which governments would no longer be able to fund wars and people would have power of their own money and destiny. Satoshi imagined a digital equivalent of old-fashioned gold from the start, a new kind of universal money that could be owned by anyone and invested anywhere. These new digital coins, like gold, were only worth what anyone was willing to pay for them at the time, initially zero. However, the system was designed to ensure that bitcoins, like gold, would always be scarce. Only 21 million would ever be issued, and difficult to counterfeit. It takes a lot of computational work to release new bitcoins from their source. As a new way to store money, bitcoin had some clear advantages over gold. It didn't take a ship to transport bitcoins from London to New York. Instead, all it took was a private digital key and a mouse click. Satoshi used unbreakable mathematical formulas rather than armed guards for protection. However, comparing bitcoin to gold only goes so far in understanding why it has become so famous. Each gold ingot has always existed separately from the others. Bitcoins, on the other hand, were created to operate within a decentralized network that was cleverly developed, just as many of the world's websites exist only within the decentralized network known as the Internet. The Bitcoin network, like the Internet, was not operated by a central authority. Instead, it was designed and maintained by anyone who connected their computers to it, which everyone could do anywhere in the world. With the Internet, what connects everyone together is a set of software rules known as the Internet Protocol, which governs how information moves around. Bitcoin has its own software protocol, the rules that dictate how the system works. Chapter 2. Paper money has been a legal tender for many years, but it seems outdated given the level of technology available today. The emergence of Bitcoin is an attempt to provide a currency that meets the demands of the digital age. The physical entity of money replaced the trade by barter system. Cryptocurrency seems to be the logical replacement for physical money in this age. The specifics of how Bitcoin worked could be mind-bogglingly complex, involving sophisticated math and cryptography. But from the beginning, a small community of ardent supporters recognized that Bitcoin was, at its core, simply a new way of making, storing, and sending money. This was a currency that was developed and maintained by its users, with new money gradually distributed to those who contributed to the network's success. Bitcoins were not generated by central banks and owned and transferred by large, powerful financial institutions like dollars and euros. Since it aimed to challenge some of our society's most influential institutions, the Bitcoin network has been characterized in utopian terms by its supporters since its inception. Bitcoin held out the promise of taking power away from banks and governments and giving it to people who use the currency, just as the internet took power away from big media companies and placed it in the hands of bloggers and dissidents. This idea's loftiness drew a lot of mockery. When most people first heard about it, they assumed it was a Ponzi scheme. However, Bitcoin had the good fortune of entering the world at a utopian time, in the aftermath of a financial crisis that revealed many of the flaws in our current financial and political systems, resulting in its creation. It's the first thing I know where you can get both rich and change the world. Eric Voorhees Bitcoin seemed to be a technical response to many issues, the variety of people who left their old lives behind to pursue the promise of this technology. Aficionados like Eric Voorhees and many of his new friends demonstrated the extent to which Bitcoin talked to its followers. It didn't hurt that if Bitcoin succeeded, the early adopters would be extremely rich. Chapter 3. The survival of Bitcoin was due to the combined efforts of some disaffected revolutionaries and moneyed interests. Bitcoin attracted not just disaffected revolutionaries, but also moneyed interests like Dan Moorhead, a hedge fund manager who had worked for Goldman Sachs after graduating from Princeton University. People like Moorhead pumped tens of millions of dollars into the Bitcoin ecosystem with the hope of big returns. Investors and developers in Silicon Valley were clamoring to figure out how to use Bitcoin to build on traditional payment systems like PayPal, Visa, and Western Union, as well as steal business from Wall Street. Those who had no support for Occupy Wall Street or the Tea Party, two campaigns that attempted to reform the way financial systems worked, could see the advantages of a more common currency that does not need to be traded at every boundary. They also recognized the benefits of a digital payment system that does not require you to include your personal details each time you use it. Bitcoin enabled citizens to maintain a digital account without incurring significant fees. 
Rather than relying solely on cash, Bitcoin offered a convenient payment mechanism that allowed online providers to charge as little as a penny or a dime for viewing a single news article or skipping an ad, circumventing the existing limitations placed by the 20 or 30 cent minimum charge for a credit card purchase. The emergence of Bitcoin sparked revolutionary conversations and deliberations among many stakeholders. Many people interested in more practical applications of Bitcoin, on the other hand, ended up talking about the technology in revolutionary terms as a way to make money by upsetting the status quo. Did you know, within the first five years, more than 5 million Bitcoin wallets were opened on different websites, mostly outside the United States. Chapter 4. Many bankers, economists, and government officials dismissed Bitcoin enthusiasts as gullible promoters of a speculative bubble. The Bitcoin tale echoed critics' warnings on many occasions, demonstrating the risks of heading into a more digitized environment with no central authority. And they seemed to be confirmed when Mt. Gox, the world's largest Bitcoin company, revealed that it had lost the equivalent of around $400 million worth of its users' Bitcoins and was going out of business. The latest in a series of such scandals to hit Bitcoin users. The conceptual advances made by Bitcoin weren't just clever. They were useful in ways that could influence the future financial system. Nathaniel Popper None of the crises were able to dampen the excitement of Bitcoin believers, and the number of users continued to increase despite the difficulties. Some were motivated by their distrust of government, others by their dislike of big banks, and still others by more personal, intimate experiences. For example, a Chinese Walmart executive who grew up with grandparents who survived the communist revolution with only the gold they had stashed in their homes discovered Bitcoin to be a much more easily transportable option in an unpredictable world. Satoshi Nakamoto, the Bitcoin founder, vanished in 2011, leaving behind open-source software that Bitcoin users may download and develop. It was these many people, working in various locations and for various reasons, who had created Bitcoin and were continuing to do so, and who are the focus of this story. Just 15% of the basic Bitcoin programming code was estimated to be the same five years later as what Satoshi had written. Aside from software development, Bitcoin, like all currencies, has always been only as useful and effective as the number of people who use it. Each new individual who joined in increased the chances of survival. Chapter 5. The Bitcoin Story is Unique, Quite Unlike Many Startup Stories The Bitcoin story is that of a collective innovation that tapped into many of the dominant currents of our time, including outrage against the government and Wall Street, fights between Silicon Valley and the financial industry, and the expectations we have put in technology to save us from our own human frailty, as well as the fear that technology's power can create. Each of the individuals mentioned in this tidbit had their own reasons for pursuing this new concept, but their entire lives have been influenced by the desires, greed, idealism, and human frailty that have propelled Bitcoin from obscurity to a billion-dollar industry. One should always anticipate both profits and losses when dealing with Bitcoin or any other investment. For some of the participants, the end result has been immense wealth in a limited amount of time. Others have ended up in poverty or even jail as a result of their actions. Bitcoin is never more than one major hack away from complete failure. Even if it fails, it will have presented one of the most interesting tests on how money works, who profits from it, and how it can be changed. It is unlikely to replace the dollar in the next five years, but it gives us a glimpse of where we could be when the government finishes printing dead presidents' faces on expensive paper. Chapter 6. The Bitcoin Network allows members to generate their own Bitcoin address and a corresponding private key. A Bitcoin address is usually made up of 34 letters and numbers, while the private key is a string of 64 characters. For example, one actual Bitcoin address is 16RR5PTOKAUNXXXJQE4HG5JZRFW69FNPATF. The private key for this particular address is 5JJ5RLKJYMMSXHAUOA334CDZNCOVE. W6OLFMPFL8H1W9PYDOPMF3. Transactions from that address can only be signed off on by the individual who has this private key. There is only one private key for each Bitcoin address. The relationship between the private key and the address is calculated by a set of complicated math equations, making it almost impossible to locate the private key by working backwards from the public Bitcoin address. It costs nothing for a Bitcoin consumer to create as many Bitcoin addresses and private keys as they want. The length of the addresses and the sheer number of possible addresses make it nearly impossible to produce the same address twice. A consumer, let's call her Esther, can send money from her address using a private key without ever sharing it with anyone else. Rather than sending her private key out, Esther stores it along with the specifics of her transaction in software on her own computer. Instead of submitting this information to the network, Esther's computer's Bitcoin program runs it through a series of complicated math calculations, producing a unique code known as a digital signature. This step will take place even if Esther's machine is turned off. Esther sends this digital signature, which is a special product of her private key, and the transaction in progress to the network along with her transaction, almost like a check signature. Due to the mathematical advances involved in verification, the computers that obtain Esther's digital signature are unable to work backward to obtain Esther's private key. 
However, computers will combine Esther's digital signature and her public Bitcoin address into a new set of complicated math equations to check that the digital signature was provided by the private key corresponding to the public address. Again, these are highly complex mathematical operations that occur on both sides of the transaction, on one side to generate the signature and on the other side to validate it. Since there is no central authority to perform this function, each transaction must be verified by the computers on the network. If the computers have verified that Esther has the correct private key, they search to see if the coins she is attempting to send are in Esther's Bitcoin address. Chapter 7. Nakamoto Satoshi saw alternatives when he realized that it would be problematic if each computer recorded every transaction. A transaction may reach one device on the network before reaching another, causing confusion about the balance in each address. Bitcoin required a single, irrefutable record of when each transaction took place, and Satoshi devised a clever way to do so by holding an ongoing contest in which any member of the network could participate. To win the competition, all of the machines on the network had to compile recent transactions as they were sent across the network into long lists known as blocks. After compiling the transaction into a block, a machine would run the block through a hash function, which can take any data, the Gettysburg address or your name, and transform it into a specific 64-character digest. The computers competing in the Bitcoin competition are searching for a block that can be fed into the SHA-256 hash function, which produces a 64-character digest with a specific number of zeros at the start. It's difficult to predict what kind of block would result in a digest with five zeros at the start, because SHA-256, like other hash functions, is virtually impossible to reverse engineer. Given that SHA-256 and other hash functions always produce the same digest from any given data, if each machine puts the same transactions into their block, they will all get the same digest. Each machine will be charged with adding a random number to the end of their blocks in order to separate them in the hopes of finding a winning block. Changing the random number at the end of the block from 20 to 22 could theoretically shift the digest from a digest with one zero to a digest with 10 zeros at the beginning, due to the sensitive existence of hash functions. If one random number did not result in a digest with the desired number of zeros, the computer would test the block again with a different random number to see if it succeeded. All of the computers hoping to win kept trying new random numbers and adding incoming transactions until one of them discovered a block that led to a digest with the right number of zeros. This contest was more of a game of luck than a game of skill because finding an answer required trying out random numbers. But the machine that could run guesses through the hash function, the quickest, will improve its chances of winning, just like a person with 20 lottery tickets has a better chance of winning than a person with only one. The number of zeros needed to win the contest was insignificant, but it made it simple to change the contest's difficulty and ensure that new blocks arrived every 10 minutes or so. If computers were winning more often than once every 10 minutes, the Bitcoin program could adapt and require that they find a digest with more zeros at the start. If computers didn't win often enough, the program could be tweaked to allow winners to have fewer zeros. As the Bitcoin competition became more difficult, more powerful computer hardware was needed to win. Chapter 8. Once found, a winning block is sent around the Bitcoin network for verification. When a winning block is discovered, computers add it to the blockchain, which is shared by all computers, thereby tracking the list of transactions contained in the block. The winning block becomes the official record of all transactions after the previous winning block. If the winning block omitted a few transactions that were included in other computers' blocks, those transactions would not be registered on the blockchain and would be skipped over in the next round of blocks. Aside from the transactions and the random number, the blocks also contained a reference to the previous block and information about the state of the Bitcoin network, ensuring that all of this information was recorded on the blockchain. The innovative method for achieving a single communally agreed-upon record of transaction provided a long-awaited solution to what is called the Byzantine general problem. There is a lot of automation and science that goes into the Bitcoin network. When a computer created a winning block, it was awarded a bundle of new coins, initially 50 bitcoins. These coins were produced in an ingenious manner. In other words, when computers created a block's list of transactions, they included a transaction that gave one of their own bitcoin addresses 50 bitcoins out of thin air. This apparently fictional transaction became a reality when a block won the lottery and was added to the blockchain, and the address in question received 50 more bitcoins. The transaction became real after it was added to the blockchain. The transaction that generates new bitcoins is referred to as the block's coin base. Even if a computer produced a digest with the correct number of zeros, if it attempted to award itself more than 50 new bitcoins, the entire block would be rejected by the other computers. Conclusion the aficionados that worked to create the Bitcoin concept have undoubtedly opened the doors for the new digital currency on the block. What remains to be seen is whether cryptocurrency will actually oust paper money as a legal tender globally. For that to happen, the current financial institutions will have to throw in the towel in the battle against this form of payment system that encourages privacy. If you decide to buy Bitcoin, be sure to understand that there are risks involved. Do some research and ensure that you are doing the right thing. It's okay to be confused at first, but as time goes on, it becomes easier. Bitcoin is here to stay, and it has become a mainstay in our economy. The stage is set. What determines the winner of this duel is the number and caliber of soldiers each side can recruit. As it stands, it may be safe to say that it is a case of no victor, no vanquished. The value of the coins have skyrocketed since it began, and people now have a lot of money due to the calculated risks they took. Their motivation was profit, but profit is not the only motivation for seeing the cryptocurrency market thrive. 
what might be your own motivation for exploring the crypto world. Would you be willing to invest in this market, knowing what you know about its history? Why don't you take a leap and see what happens? Try this. Read some more books on Bitcoin and its advantages. Also, check your portfolio to see how you can make wiser investment decisions.